Well, the stimulus is being quite slow to come through, but we are seeing signs of it coming now. You know, the credit impulse is positive. We're starting to see it in some of the softer data as well. Um, I think the Chinese import data this morning wasn't a huge supporter of that theory. Yeah. But uh, nevertheless, I think there's enough there, and history suggests that China policy stimulus does come through um, eventually. I want to go back to the data this morning because it's mind-boggling how we're seeing huge swings from one month to the next. And obviously, every year you have to take the first couple of months of the year with a grain of salt because you get the distortions from the new uh, Lunar New Year holiday. So again, would you simply look through some of the volatility that we've seen in the data? I mean, in February, we saw a decline in exports of 20 percent, and now we're up 14.2 percent in terms of export growth. Yeah, I think you have to see through some of the data, and I think your presentation of how equity prices respond to that is broadly consistent. Um, in the end, I think, yes, it surprised us on the upside on exports. It's the imports really, I think, for the rest of the world that really matters. I mean, China is just so important, impossible to underestimate how important Chinese, China is in terms of driving global trade in its imports. Uh, so that was a bit weaker, but as I say, I think you have to read through it and say the policy stimulus is there, it's in the pipeline, it's starting to come through, uh, and I think that removes one of the grey clouds on the world economy for this year. Mm -hmm. Should it be a model for other countries in terms of how to reduce its reliance on the export sector and focus more on the service-led sector, on the domestic demand side of the equation? Um, I'm, I'm not sure I'd put it like a model for other economies. I mean, there's... Um, you know, so much to the Chinese business model that is probably uh, positive and other stuff that probably other countries couldn't um, really copy. Um, but I do think that the gradual rebalancing is going just about as well as we might expect in the Chinese economy. And, uh, you know, the fact that they've, you know, every time there is a big downturn like there was last year, you do worry what's going to be exposed. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've got through that. And, you know, I, th I think that going forward, uh, you know, 2019 H2 will be better. Gabriel, I want to broaden out this discussion a little bit because on this show we talk a lot about the disconnect between uh, what we're seeing in the equity markets and the bond markets. Just recently, as recent as like three, four weeks ago, we saw an inverted yield curve. Everyone was worried about the recession, yet in the equity markets, we're going from highs to highs. European markets at eight month highs and US markets not too far away from their all time highs. Which asset is right at this point? Well, with yields going lower and lower, of course, in some ways that's good for uh, equity markets. You know, it's good for PE ratios, so long as growth doesn't get destroyed. And of course, the nervousness about the yields going so low and inverted yield curves is that you're on the verge of recession. Now, our take on that is that actually probably uh, we re completely respect the history of yield curves and their accuracy, but there are good reasons why that leading indicator properties weaken. I mean, you've got very structurally low yield, uh, low risk term premium in yields. Uh, so that means that you're more likely to get inversions. At the same time, part of that reason is lower volatility. And that lower volatility also applies to global activity. So I don't think you do get as many recessions. So basically, I think, uh, you know, what, what, our, what our strategists have done really good work on is saying, well, you're getting lower volatility world. That probably means more inversions, fewer recessions. So. Yes, it's a worry, but not quite as big a worry as it has been in the past. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersecci, and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.